ruling party turned the country's economic capital into a sea of green and yellow this afternoon, two days before Sunday's poll, and what many have dubbed its toughest election yet, Chamacha Mapinduzi pulled out all stops, at least from a public relations point of view. John, Joseph, Out with the old and in with the new. Or so hopes Tanzania's ruling party that when the baton is passed after Sunday's election, the new bearer will still come from the liberation movement that has been in power for five decades now. With polls and pundits giving him the edge over all his rivals, Chama Chama Pinduzi presidential candidate John Magufuli headlined his party's last push rally in the country's commercial capital of Dar es Salaam. He promised a better and more prosperous Chama Tanzania. Chama Observers have hailed Tanzania's parties for largely carrying themselves well throughout their campaigning, except for a few minor hiccups. We are hearing and we are seeing incidences of uh, that are indicating violence here, is, here and there, like vandalism of campaign materials, um, like incidences where maybe uh, the clashes of supporters of different parties are clashing during the um, um, the election campaigns, meetings. But if you look on the percentages and the number of campaign meetings that have been observed, uh, it's not alarming. On Saturday, at this very same venue, it will be opposition's turn to try and match or better their rival's performance. Vuyom Vogo, SABC News, Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. For more on the story, we are now joined on the line by Vuyom Voko, our contributing editor who is in Tanzania. Thanks for joining us, Vuyom. Now, what's the mood like ahead of Sunday's polls? Well, good evening, uh, Tabile, and uh, thank you very much. Well, um, it's been an eventful day, certainly in Dar es Salaam, and that is where, as you um, heard and saw in that clip, um, that is where the ruling uh, party had its final push um, this uh, afternoon. Quite um, a huge showing, it must be said. Not surprising, because from the moment we arrived here um, a few days ago, we could see all over the city that uh, the ruling party was indeed leaving nothing to chance. Not surprising given just how strong um, the opposition here has suddenly become. Of course, it must be uh, pointed out that it is a coalition that has now put up quite um, a formidable um, 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 coalition to really rival um, the ruling party. So the ruling party not taking um, anything um, um, for granted, but on um, the other hand, um, having an opposition that has really come as close as um, the opposition has ever come to really challenging the incumbent, uh, a party of, uh, that was formed by people like Julius Nyerere, um, the father of this democracy, and a party that has ruled um, this country for about uh, five decades. An eventful day, but whether indeed the numbers we saw today will translate into yet another victory by the ruling party is what remains to be seen. But it must be pointed out that uh, f certainly from the two surveys that have been conducted or whose results were announced over the past week, it does seem like um, the ruling party will indeed um, be the victors come Sunday's election, but it's not over yet. Yes, for you, it's not over yet. Now, Tanzania is by far one of the functional democracies on the continent. Is this the sense once one gets ahead of the crucial elections?
Well, it is indeed a very, uh, a fairly stable um, democracy. You don't see the kinds of incidents that we saw in Burundi, for example. You don't see the sporadic uh, violence outbreaks that you've seen in Kenya. But um, uh, you also don't see, certainly, that's not uh, what outgoing President Kikwete has done. He hasn't, uh, he has tried to resist the temptation that we've seen in Uganda, uh, where we've seen President Museveni uh, ruling over and over again or employing every trick in the book um, to stay in power. He hasn't uh, displayed uh, the tendencies that we've seen uh, not too far from here in Rwanda, uh, President Kagame. We haven't seen here what we've seen in, uh, in the DRC, where the president there was tempted to uh, try and change the constitution so that he could stay in power for much longer. So on those uh, accounts, if you take that as examples, Indeed, um, um, Tanzania has become uh, something as close as uh, countries have uh, come here to being a stable democracy that has led uh, by example. But then again, that's not all that defines a good um, democracy. You have to have, um, you know, uh, economic growth so that you can um, take care of your people. Now, we've seen in 2013, um, this country having an, uh, a like 7.3% uh, uh, economic growth, but which in subsequent years, it hasn't really been able um, to sustain. Unemployment remains a big problem. It's got a very youthful uh, population. I mean, at the rally today, you could see the police officers um, that were there maintaining order. Very, very young men and, of course, a sprinkling of uh, women. And, um, among them. So it does need to work and work hard at ensuring that uh, um, this democracy uh, really has the, all the hallmarks of a democratic nation, but that it is also able to grow economically and actually take care of, the, of its people. Because if you don't do that, then people become restless and uh, it's, it's, it's unpredictable what they would do um, afterwards when they are unemployed, when there are no opportunities and when they are starved and on the other hand they are seeing the elite uh, going around in fancy cars and all the money going to them instead of being shared equally or equitably among uh, the populace. Voyo, you've just taken us through some of the characteristics of a good democracy but let's shift focus and look at some of the concerns that opposition has, has raised with the Electoral Commission in Tanzania. If, if you can repeat your question again, Tabela, if you don't mind, I lost you for a few seconds there. Vuyo, I was saying that can you take us through some of the concerns that the opposition have taken to the Electoral Commission? Well, um, if I got your question correctly, look, the opposition has really been working uh, hard. And uh, the problems that people have been highlighting are the kinds of problem you hear people back home in South Africa um, talking about, and uh, which the ruling party in South Africa itself, the ANC, continues to or, or, or categorizes as uh, the sins of incumbency, where the party in power becomes complacent. It it is not as vigilant as it ought to be. Um, that uh, perhaps is the reason why you are seeing uh, uh, students uh, marching to parliament, marching to the union buildings uh, to uh, highlight the issue of exorbitant uh, fees. You ask yourself, 21 years um, into democracy, how did we get to this point? How do we get to, did we get to this point when the ruling party itself actually said or took resolutions 
conference after conference saying education is our priority number one and one of the goals we have to work towards is ensuring that there is indeed a free education. Were they sleeping all this time? Why did they not implement their own resolutions? Um, you know, so those are, you, you've got a similar, you've got similar concerns even here in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Tanzania. 50 years down the line is what the Tanzanians are experiencing the best that uh, um, the ruling party could have ever uh, put before this nation. Um, are the things that it hasn't done deliberate, I mean, are, are, are the omissions deliberate or are those omissions of a, of a, of a government that really hasn't been thinking about its people or a, a government that simply did not care? And the opposition is capitalizing on those things significant perhaps is uh, is uh, uh, or one of the significant things is this how did the opposition rally around a candidate that was the poster boy um, of corruption when he was still with the ruling party how did the opposition manage to get away or grow uh, uh, or, or, or project an image of growth uh, having rallied or, or, or having been rallying around a person who was accused of corruption for several years. It begins to tell you that uh, perhaps uh, some people may be saying, look, any this person is better than any person we are seeing in government or in the ruling party at uh, the moment. It didn't take a squeaky clean person um, as its candidate. It took instead someone many people saw as someone who was being uh, compromised. So the uh, ruling party really beyond um, this election would have to take a very long and hard look at itself and hopefully the opposition wouldn't won't make the kinds of mistake that will weaken it further instead it will grow from here because if you get a, if you've got a strong opposition and um, that keeps um, the ruling party on its toes I think it goes without saying that uh, the ruling party won't uh, take things for granted take up uh, sentiment and the party that brought you um, um, liberation and so on aside because it is, if it is not it's not good like sentiment is not going to put jobs is not is not going to bring jobs to this nation sentiment is not going to put bread on the table it is not going to educate um, the people of this nation it is long hard work slogging um, that is really going to make a difference whether it's the ruling party Party in power or whether it's the opposition that comes um, um, into power and, and I think it's about time that Africa learns uh, that lesson so that no one takes um, the people of this continent for granted. Vuyo, as it stands, can we expect a free and fair election? Well, indications are that uh, the election up until now, it has been, I mean, the atmosphere has certainly been uh, largely free and fair. And as you saw in the clip um, um, uh, earlier, I mean, we spoke, we went to a civil society initiative, which was a center that monitors in real time events that are happening. It's got people monitors all over the country. The only incidents that they have been able to report are such things as people de uh, uh, ripping off posters, uh, minor issues of intimidation where uh, on a way to a rally, set a supporter or certain supporters would uh, really uh, have a go at each other, but nothing major. Not people uh, running after one another with guns or killing each other or, 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 or uh, uh, like running after each other with pangas or nopkiris or anything like that.
that. So by and large, it's been uh, free and fair, no a major incident. Certainly from, uh, the, those are the reports we're getting from Tanzania's own people, churches, NGOs, um, university uh, lecturers and students who have taken it upon themselves uh, um, to ensure that this election remains free and fair. But also from the observers uh, who have been here from the African Union, from the Commonwealth and, uh, uh, and other observer missions, they too haven't really witnessed any or received any major incidents of violence or intimidation. So unless something happens over uh, the next day um, or so, uh, but up until now, it, things have really been going very, very smoothly compared to many, many uh, 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 democracies or uh, uh, similar situations across the continent. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much for the update, Vuyo. That was our contributing editor, Vuyo Mboko, joining us on the line from Tanzania.